Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining us today. We are unboxing Merv, Heart of the Silk Road. Were you trying to do like a horizontal Rodney Smith? The, yeah, that's that's exactly <laughs> what I'm. I just uh, and it, it always look. It always lands on the table. That's the key. So this is actually a game we have both played before. Yes, we <laughs> thought it was very. We thought it was very interesting. We actually enjoyed quite a bit of it. So we're going to be able to talk about how it actually plays. And go a bit more through our first impressions and review of it as we open it up. I, I just really hope that people from now on just want horizontal Rodney Smith flips for every unboxing video we do. Like, for I, now and forever. Well, either way. <laughs> so there's a reason why we are... I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. There's a reason <laughs> so why much. we are unboxing and sort of doing an overview of this game Why now, is that, Jesse? It's because it hasn't been available. Whoa! No, it, what? It really hasn't. So we oh. just we just got this copy in. Uh, the publisher just launched a campaign, a full reprint. So they're back available for pre-order and in stock, I believe. Ooh. And so we now actually have a copy instead of just playing our friends and not being able to cover it here on the channel. So, okay. interesting. Merv, Jan, do you remember much about this game? We played it maybe five, six months ago. What, 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 what are you doing? I'm sure enough I have fingernails. Okay, we, we've done a few unboxings. And we always do Spidey. Are you proud that you have fingernails? I, 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 I made a bet. I made a bet with someone. Are you are you are you aiming to be like wolf like saber tooth or Wolverine? No, I mean they're still they're they've only grown out for like a week or two. They're still tiny. <laughs> I just always I just always I always used to bite them. I don't like how they look, so I'm like excited that I'm getting finger. What are you making fun of me? Merv. So yeah, so Merv is going to be a Euro game where you're kind of tower, def you're like your tower, tower defense. A you're bit. both developing the heart of the city. So you're gonna, yeah. have, you're gonna have the classic Euro elements where you have worker placement zones, you have actions that you can take, you have different economic engines mm -hmm. and resources that you're managing. But the other core feature of this is going to be not necessarily a tower defense, but sort of a city building, a city, a city wall and construction that does its very best to uh, incentivize you and other players to protect the city gates. So here's the area that you're talking mm -hmm. about, and different actions will be placed down into this, these zones, allowing you to take them throughout the course of the game. You're going to be moving from round one to two to three to four, and as this city develops, walls will be placed, barriers will be placed, and workers will be placed that allow you to chain actions mm -hmm. based on where you go. Here's the thing that you're talking about, the city defense. This is going to get overrun with, I Mongol. think, Mongols. Yeah, right? the Mongol, Mongol horde. invasion. Yeah. And as it do does so, as it do so... As it do so, I like to do so. I, it, it is appropriate when you talk about Mongol invasions <laughs> to just reduce Okay, well, that's reductive. Degree, yes. yeah, yeah. That's so, reductive. I'm sorry. As you, as you do so, <laughs> you're going to be destroying the walls, moving into the area, and mm -hmm. you'll lose your workers. You'll lose if you end up being in the path of the invasion coming through. And that's going to happen two times during the entirety of the game, which is divided, I believe, into three different rounds. So these are going to be the different actions that we talked about. This is kind of shuffled at the beginning of the game, and then they're placed in these locations. And you'll notice that, obviously, this is a very um, very simple grid, a four, a four by five. Oh, I'm sorry, a five by five. And we're going to have small meeples. Those meeples are going to be traveling along the border, and depending on how you develop your kind of network of buildings, you're able to then capitalize in the future of what you're able to do on your turn. You see, each one of those buildings that we're showcasing right there are a specific one type of resource that they're all generating. They're all going to be color-coded. So when you pass over one of these buildings, you're also well, going not, to be able... And they're not only generating resources, they're also specifically actions that you can take mm -hmm. related to like the spice trade, related to the temple here, building walls to fortify the city, or the reason why we have camels for travel, which is going to be the caravans here, and then we have the... I think it's the mage, I think it's like... Yeah, a, it's the, a it's resource, this, it's a marketplace, yes. right? It's a resource conversion area. Mm -hmm. So every time that you go into a, a row, you're able to place down a small home there, a, a house, a building. And when you place down that building, it's kind of like... Home. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's one trope we're not revisiting on this video. When you come and revisit that same row where you have your house, when you place down a second house, what you're doing is that you're building up an engine. Let's suppose that this is over here. Now, every time that you kind of decide to activate a location where you have a home, you'll pick up that resource and whatever other of the same colored house yep. you're activating so you also get an orange. However, 
That does mean that other players are going to be able to do the same thing, but you're going to be able to do the same thing with other players' houses. That is, well, that's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's incentivized to protect areas of the city and also let some fall, depending on if it helps or hurts you and your opponents the most. And the object is going to be developing defenses here that block a certain degree in. So, like, the Mongols might attack. In this location, they might be able to go too deep. Here, they mm -hmm. might only go one deep. Here, they might go three deep. And you have to try to make sure your side is protected as much as possible. If you build right smack dab in the middle, you kind of have to consider your defenses on three parts of the wall. 100%, so it becomes really, really, really tricky So as the game goes along. Outside of that, let's go over just basic areas here. Mm -hmm. we're not, this isn't a teacher or anything. Let's talk about... 100%. I have some thought. Like, I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was, it was a, a novel quite approach captivating. to, like, a Euro style. It's mm -hmm. one that I've wanted in the collection ever since we got a chance to play it. So over here is going to be the trade location. Yep. Uh, you're going to be taking your camels and maneuvering from different marketplaces front and back. That'll generate resources for you, allow you to convert some resources into others, and really be one of the main economic drivers of the game. Well, one of the really interesting things about the trade section is that you're moving a small circle around, and mm -hmm. that circle represents where you're located, and those it's are a, the spaces you can trade It's a trade, trade network. For. However, the camels that Jesse are mentioning is a universal resource in all parts of the game that feed into each other in different ways. And in this location, it allows you to skip one trade network and push to some of the more valuable or more advanced locations. But you don't have to play that camel. It is up you to don't you. Have to. Yeah. And the reason why you might want to play the camel when you're there is because you can kind of double up on actions, mm -hmm. right? You're it, it, Normally, you'd only be able to just buy that what is that, a man, uh, 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 orange. So, orange. Yeah. You can you tell mean, by the color. <laughs> I was thinking of a nectarine or something like that. Mm. But yes, an no, orange. Those are poisonous. For some people. For some people. Uh, so you're able to buy it here, but if you pay a camel, then you're able to go up here to Kashgar and then purchase some diamonds, right? Yep. So it gives you larger flexibility. However, that's what camels do everywhere else in the game. So... Spending spending them there could be dire for other parts of the game that you might want to prepare for. For example, in player order. Yeah. Sometimes, how, depending on how this area pans out, all these meeples start kind of jumping into each other. So the actions are going to be taken mm -hmm. by moving down this track in any of these zones. The Where your meeple lands is what you're going to be able to select from that row or column that you've taken or you've chosen. It'll be the resources you generate mm -hmm. and the actions that you take this turn starting to chain and catapult each other if you have more locations available to yourself. Here's the thing. The farther you go down, the earlier or the no, the later you're going to be in the next potential timeline because mm -hmm. it stacks one, two, three, four. But you can pay those camels to go ahead bump and yourself ahead. up. Yep. Bumping another player downwards, right? And I think that's done in also in player order. So the first person would pay those camels, then the second, then the third. So the, well, the first, first person, the first person would never have a chance. Second would pay a camel to bump the first, mm -hmm. third, so on and so forth. Yep. And that's where the camels start becoming intrinsic in the how you proceed through the games. And that's not the only places you're going to be able to get camels from. Well, actually, we haven't even talked how you you're get those right, camels. You're going to run for the middle. Right for the middle. You so show the, middle up to the board. center of the city. Like everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Murder's one of those cities. You show up to the center of it and you go... I need a camel! And then I need your camels! Yeah. Need your camels there. Somewhere there are like 12 merchants. Hey, I got a camel like, for you, a camel for you. We're yeah. for five nectarines, five nectarines. Going once, going twice, going three. Historically, historically, the very center of the town was like a really high quality car dealership, except for camels. <laughs> The deals were amazing. Though. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. You know, price my of, auctioning voice was close enough to what you. Price of a camel that. back in the day, remarkably cheap. <laughs> Two nectarines and well, one dead body. Uh, let's move up here to this area. Talking about dead bodies, this is where <laughs> were you very un okay? Great. Going to start falling. The more, the, the more mortar. you invest in this location, which is mm -hmm. go to the city defenses and ramparts, which I can find over here. I believe is this them? Yeah. So as we said, each one of so one of the things that we've kind of skipped These over. These are going to be establishing mm -hmm. barriers to the Mongol horde raging through and you will get incentivized for building you know it takes different types of resources and if you've taken the time to invest in and build city defenses you will also of course be rewarded for that at the end of the game for victory points and depending on who you're defending as well yes so if if i have different types of colored houses here and i'm defending both myself and them i would get more favor or diplomatic fa yep. i think it's favor on this track which will allow me to get other things but one of the things that i haven't really talked about yet which is super important is that this is a 
a multi multi action selection game. Is that how you say that? Basically, every one of these houses counts for different types of actions that you can take. Yeah. And it's your choice to choose which of those multiple things you want to do. Um, usually. When you go into a location, you'll be able to just invest in all the materials that you'll be able to gather based on your network. However, you're also able to place down a guard. And placing down guards is pretty important because that is going to be your defense before you can build these expensive walls in case those Mongols come in. The, the like, guard is going to defend one tile mm -hmm, and only exactly. last, I believe, one round. Yeah, exactly. They just, woof, disappear Where, afterwards. I mean, look, you pay them for a day, they show up, they're like, ah. They gotta get those camel deals. That's true. Gotta they, go to yeah, the center of town go early in the day. Town. They go to the center <laughs> of town the next morning and protect the camels. Uh, and then the other thing you do are the actual actions. Yeah. That are across all these tiles. It'd be nice if okay, can we get more of these tiles out there just so we can see. I've got a whole punch board of them over here. Uh, these are all going to be the scroll. So I've got some scroll ones. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the wall sections, right? And so those wall, wall sections, depending on where you're placing them, you're going to be able to start building off different parts of that wall. You're going to have two different types of section. You're going to have your standard wall, and then you're going to have your uh, your gates, yep. Yep, right, your city gates. And the interesting thing about this is that they do scale up in terms of pricing, I believe depending on how many pieces are already in that section of wall, correct? Uh, I, I don't believe so. I believe it's just scales up based on what's been used to build the wall. These are limited mm -hmm. resources. And so once this has been used, you can no longer activate that wall build section again. Okay. And I think. I mean, if I remember correctly. Again, it's been a few months since we've played. I think it's been a year, man. Yeah. I think it's been a year. So we've we've already talked about two major sections of the game. I didn't months. really pay attention to about a year, so I don't know about you. Well, I just checked out. Yeah. What, what were we it's talking about again? Nothing at oh, all. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the next section is going, going to be the Moss Track. Yeah. This is going to be a much more typical or traditional um, kind of... I, Euro, Euro Spend track. the resources, move up, get mm -hmm. the benefit. If you get high enough, you get victory points. Exactly. And so the way that this is going to work is that every time you, you want to go up... And if you camel to the mosque, you can go higher quicker. No, actually, you don't use camels Can you not here. use camels no. to push up? No, you have to spend the resources on this one. You do gonna, collect camels. It was going to be unfortunate for the camel. <laughs> You just stack them on top like yeah. Aladdin. and Yeah. yeah. So, um, in order to go up this track, you're going to have to spend the resources that are depicted on the board. Every time you go up that track, it's going to give you a permanent bonus for the duration of the game. And another really interesting thing about this is that, and of every track, is that they're going to tie down into this one here, but we'll get to that later. The track that I ignored when we played, oh. and you invested heavily in. Oh, I invested in one thing, and it went great. It was fantastic. And so, ideally, what you want to do is move up as high as possible you did those things yeah highest possible here and it at the end of this track you're even going to start banking vic straight up victory points yep. every time that the round ends so this can be quite an interesting avenue for victory and that's one of the interesting things about Merv. Yep. each one of these different sectors of the board in one way or another is a different path to victory and i'm sure that there's even combinations of what you can do to start building an interesting engine and i think that's probably one of the hallmarks of this it's, particular It's one design. of the things that I wanted to sit down and start re-exploring, because we left the game going, that was interesting, now I want to play with some of the other areas. And it's one of these Euros that is complex and open enough that you really focusing on one or two efficiently can drive endgame, mm -hmm. right? But you have to do it, and you could start pairing. In, like, what if I went uh, Moss Track and, uh, and Caravan and over mm -hmm. here? What if I was focused on the trade market here? and really defending the city. Like, I was the, the, just a rich person throwing money. There's there's different narratives and different engines, and I believe I believe there's a expansion coming out that's going to add oh. to that modularity as well. Really? Like variability. I'm not 100% wow. sure. I'm not, but I think. Interesting. So, let's talk about this board, because this is actually one of the most important boards in the yeah. entire game, and it's the one board that I don't remember its exact name, but whatever. So, on this board, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to send your worker specifically to that section in order to kind of get you victory points for future turns. At the end of every round, depending on how far up you're able to go in this favor track down here, and depending on how many workers you have in different sections, you're able to pay off that favor in order to bank victory points for each one of those. And depending on how many workers you have in different sections, those can become exponential in the amount of victory points that you're getting. All you have to do is kind of balance both where, what type uh, of... What was it? It's the palace. Oh, the palace. 
Yes, it's kind of it's kind of obvious now, isn't it? Yeah. Now, wonderful. Yeah, I get it now. The palace. Welcome everyone to the palace. So I, w- I was saying for the palace, Jesse, that when we send workers to these different sections, these are kind of multipliers. Yeah. Every time we send someone there, which actually this is interesting because you have to both balance your guards and these workers here because it's the same pool. But anyways, um, you're kind of almost focusing on a particular strategy. Yep. You're either focusing on generating a lot of goods, generating a lot of spices, generating, uh, going higher up on the moss track. Or gaining knowledge over here on the knowledge. Exactly. The, the scroll track. Speaking of the skull, skull, uh, skull, I was going to see you, you, you tied me into the murder scrolled. thing. Scrolled. Yeah, scroll, the scroll mm. section there. And this one's a little bit more straightforward. It is. It's going to be, it's going to double for two types of things. First one is going to be achievement tiles that you can get or objective tiles that you can aim towards. Well, and which are going to be, I mean, they're going to score you a lot if you're able to complete those contracts by the end of the game. And they're going to mm-hmm. be scripted around things like generating mostly different types of resources for you to utilize. And they're also going to get you these special ability tiles. Yeah. Two and four are going to be kind of permanent boons that you're going to get as uh, for your player during the entire course of the game. And then six and eight are going to be one-time use cards with an, uh, an yeah. explosive ability that will give you a really strong foothold for the next portion of the game. So that part is a little bit more straightforward. However... Mentioning these contracts does kind of tie into why it's important to build walls, yeah. right? As you're building up these walls, you're kind of gaining that diplomatic favor, mm-hmm. which essentially is allowing you to fulfill contracts. You've got to kind of prove your worth before you have access to these cards. And you'll notice at the bottom of each one of these cards, you're going to have a number. Team. Yeah, and that number is going to directly relate to how high you are on the city's favor track. Exactly. Yeah. So, for example, if I want to get to level two contracts, I got to go all the way up there. Yeah. And not just that, this also starts letting us have different types of resources or spices yeah. that we can accumulate from this track right here as well, which is another section I've this one. Got you got a little bit of set mm-hmm. collection over here for the different types of resources and spices that you can get, which is one of the things that you're going to be going after as you're exploring over here on the caravan track. And very important, another thing you should 100% do if you're going against Jesse, if you want to win the game. Pro it's tip true. right there. It's true. Either way, so that's that's a general <laughs> overview. Uh, quickly though, first impression, like I am excited to get this to the table mostly because of, of the element that we're talking about. There's one thing that I really like that Merv does, and there's one thing that I'm excited to continue re-exploring as okay. we play more. The thing I really like is the way that these actions start chaining and doubling up on each other. We're all playing in the same pool of actions, and we're all working together to either protect, defend, and then activate as we move around the board. The action selection, and the way you can kind of lengthen your turn by strategic worker placement, is really, really well done here. Everything else is like, I understand the mechanics. Like a little bit more traditional. Straightforward, traditional, Euro, and then it does this, and it's cool. Right? So, and that's one of the things that I look for in a Euro game. I want it to be classic Euro. I don't want I don't want 100% of stuff to be new, or it wouldn't be a Euro. Yeah, I want it to be classic Euro with like a 10% dial twist. A 10%? Just a 10%. A tinner's percent. A tinner's percent, yeah. a tinner's percent dial twist. <laughs> And that's what this does with the way that you select your actions here. I really, really enjoy this this section of the game. I, everything else could change. I really enjoyed this section of the game. I'm trying to remember the name of the mechanic, the leapfrog mechanic, because it is one of my favorites. It's in one of my favorite games, which is Glen uh, Glenmore Two. Yeah. And Glenmore, uh, whoever is at the last place gets to go first, etc., yep. etc. I I love that push and that push and pull of kind of always determining how badly you want that specific area, but also. Kind what of sacrificing. You, what are you investing the next in round? next turn for the first place versus what are you doing now? And then the thing I'm really excited to explore is just going to be the nature of a good euro, sure. which is the variability and potential scoring actions that could drive end game home. I want to find that balance. I want to. I want to keep playing this game because I want to try to go heavy on the moss track. I want to really invest in trade and do it more and better than I did last time. I want. I want to spend all my resources on building the wall and and see if there's a way that this game allows me to win with any of those or break it in some kind of twisted way, right? That's what I love to discover in these games. A way to be, a way to find a combination where it's like, hey, if I build all the city gates and then invest all my workers on these two middle tracks, is that good enough? Like, does that do it? 
I don't know. I don't know till I've tried. I think that's one of the ma- one of the major things that I'm really curious about Merv as well, right? Uh, and not, I think what would it be a high high percent uh, high percentage of Euro games? You want to focus on a single track, right? A single direction. A single Often, some of them. Strategy. It's either it's either narrow on one and mm-hmm. they're all balanced. Mm-hmm. If you do do it the best, or flush on all, or flush on two or three, like. It's 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 one or the other often though with a game you either need to be narrow like singular singularly mm-hmm. minded and everything else you do is investing in that track, or you got to be balanced across the board. I'm curious to see where this one is. Exactly because this one is kind of inviting you every turn. You're kind of pulled into like like uh, song, what what would be that term a siren call yeah. right to go to different actions to do different things because they're all accessible to you at all times and you're yeah. moving to these places strategically in order to have access to those unique actions right. So in a certain way, I don't know. I feel like it's probably kind of incentivizing me to also diversify. Right? I'd be curious to see. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to see. So overall, I thought it was pretty solid the first time we played. No, I, really I, I remember it. enjoying I, it. I am I'm thrilled that I have it in my collection now. I'm glad that they were able to do a reprint. Uh, I have heard from the publisher that the copies that they have available might not last very long. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, great for them, I, I, I guess. Mean, congratulations right? to them. But <laughs> if you're watching this, go check it. I mean, there'll be a link in the top of the video description. You can check out more information on this game. I encourage you to go watch a gameplay and do some more research before you decide to pick it up yourself. But I'm excited to have a copy with us. I'm looking forward to playing it again. Uh, probably, I would predict, within the next few weeks to a month Ooh. or so, we'll hopefully have some more coverage on it after you, I, Shira, maybe Alex have sat down and given it a few more swings. Okay, well, I'm pumped to revisit. We had to uh, open it up first in order to get to that stage. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any thoughts. Have you played this game? Do you enjoy it? And whatever the case, whatever you do. Remember to do the important thing. Go mine some tin. We'll see you next time. Wrong video, Jesse. Thank you.